pleasure to introduce our next presenter, Dr. Mark Novachinsky. Dr. Novachinsky was born in Montreal and received his post-secondary education in a variety of Canadian cities, including Quebec, Kingston, Vancouver, and Toronto, and also in Singapore. He closed his family practice in July 2007, and now he spends all his clinical time outside the office setting caring for frail housebound seniors in Toronto. In 1998, he began to photograph this hidden and vulnerable population in order to raise awareness and advocate for change. His ongoing photo documentary project has been profiled in national print, radio, and television media, and is now the subject of the Gemini Award-winning National Film Board of Canada documentary film, House Calls. Working with a group of community partners, Dr. Novachinsky is part of an interdisciplinary community-based team that promotes aging in place and improves the health and quality of life of seniors by providing ongoing home-based supportive medical and professional care. An assistant professor in the Department of Family and Community Medicine at the University of Toronto, he is actively involved in teaching, training, and research on geriatric home-based primary care. The current Aging at Home initiative in the province of Ontario supports the values reflected in the work of Dr. Novachinsky. And as we plan for a future with more seniors and fewer young people in our region, it will serve us well to reflect upon the stories of the people in his work in order to maintain a caring and supportive approach. Dr. Novachinsky, welcome to Thunder Bay. Thank you very much. It's, it's indeed a pleasure to be here. And I can report that we have more snow in Toronto than you do on the ground. <laughs> My, uh, my talk today will be in three parts. I'm going to start by giving you a sort of traditional PowerPoint with a biased overview of uh, home care of seniors. And then I'm going to show you photographs and tell you the stories of uh, people that I, I am taking care of and have taken care of that I think will give you a better sense of what some of the challenges and uh, opportunities and solutions are for caring for frail seniors in any community. Well, why is the care of seniors important? Well, there are 1.2 million Canadians over the age of 80, and the 80 plus age group is one of the fastest growing segments of the population. It was the fastest growing segment of the population, but uh, the uh, 55 to 64 year old bulge is the fastest growing segment, so it's not far behind. And what we do know is that the majority of those 1.2 million Canadians over the age of 80 will live out their days at home outside of institutional care. And that is why we need an aging at home strategy. In, uh, in the pre-war, pre-World War II years, 40% of all doctor-patient encounters were house calls. It was very routine for doctors to make house calls. And by 1980, that had dwindled to 0.6% and continued to drop through the 90s, despite the rapid expansion of the home care sector. Home care is now the fastest growing health care sector. And what this tells you is that the medical community has become totally disconnected from home care. And that's not something we can afford to allow to continue. In the last 15 years, I've seen tremendous change and upheaval in the Ontario home care system. We began the 1990s with hospital mergers and bed closures and a shifting of care in the community. And what that meant is there was a rapid expansion in the delivery of post-acute home care. So time-limited post-acute home care. And that increased post-acute home care was funded not by increasing the global home care budget, but by taking resources away from chronic supportive services for seniors. And so we saw in the mid to late 90s, chronic services for seniors becoming more fragmented, more episodic, and more inadequate. At the same time, the government of the day had a policy of uh, massive investment in long new long-term care beds. So we saw a lot of capacity come on stream, which is now saturated, by the way. Uh, and many seniors were being forced into long-term care 
by the lack of chronic supportive home care services. So we realize that is not a sustainable way of caring for our elderly. Marcus Hollander, uh, the Canadian guru of, of home care policy, uh, said, reduced resources for long-term home care and home support may bring about an ever-increasing cost spiral as people in need put more pressure on hospital beds and residential care beds, leading to more demands for budget increases from hospitals. He went on to say that long-term care may in fact be an important part of the solution to making our overall, sorry, long-term home care may in fact be an important part of the solution to making our overall health care system more efficient and effective and enhancing its value for money. Uh, Bruce Leff and John Burton, two uh, uh, American uh, home care uh, physicians, uh, said in a health care system that is becoming increasingly fragmented, home care can help bridge gaps in the continuum of care. And that very much holds true in our province. Well, not quite seven months ago, a new era began in Ontario. Uh, it was a, a bombshell that dropped very quietly at the end of August, just before the provincial election campaign got underway. And it got very little press, but uh, the Aging at Home strategy was announced. A $700 million initiative that will, quote, transform community health care services so that seniors can live healthy, independent lives in their own homes. And what I learned shortly after the announcement is that this wasn't a mere promise. George Smitherman had already received cabinet approval for the budget for the Aging at Home strategy. So when it was announced, it was a done deal, pending, of course, re-election of the government. The health minister went on to say, as our population ages, we need to look for innovative solutions that are more responsive to, the needs, to their needs and allow seniors to continue to live in comfort and with, with respect in their own homes, ideally for the rest of their days. And the press release went on to say, these services could include enhanced home care and community support services like meals, transportation, shopping, snow shoveling, that would have come in handy this year, friendly home calling, adult day programs, homemaking services, and caregiver supports. And when I read this, it struck me right away that there's a piece missing here, and that is if you're going to keep people at home, you have to provide them with primary care. The option of aging in place requires a robust chronic supportive home care system that is integrated with the delivery of primary health care. That's a critical piece. An aging at home strategy must also include provisions for the, prime, for the delivery of primary health care at home. And to put it more bluntly, we cannot replace nursing home beds with supportive home care alone. We need to also provide comprehensive medical and health services at home. And I just want to briefly tell you about a, a model of care that's being implemented uh, in Toronto. It's a very small scale project, but it's what occupies my day. And this is a, a supportive model of care that goes to the patient uh, and emphasizes continuity of care. It's a very patient-centered approach, and it integrates supportive and health services in the home and focuses on improving the quality of life and decreasing the rate of declining health. And we believe that an integrated interdisciplinary community-based team can provide comprehensive ongoing home-based care to a good number of housebound seniors working outside of the traditional doctor-centered, office-based model of primary care delivery. That's a mouthful, but, uh, but we can build multi-agency interdisciplinary collaborations in the community by breaking down silos and building on existing capacity because the capacity is there. 